In this video, I'm showing you 10 features that will make using your iPhone so much easier. We have some great stuff to cover in this video, so let's go ahead and roll the intro and jump right into it. First up is for typing on your iPhone. Everybody has experienced that frustration where you just can't get the cursor in the right spot in the text field. Luckily, there's a built-in solution for this in the iOS keyboard. If you press and hold on the space bar, the entire keyboard will turn into a trackpad, allowing you to move the cursor anywhere. This is super useful for fixing typos quickly, and it's something that I use multiple times per day. Next up, this one is going to bring some efficiency to your home screen arrangement. When you put your apps into edit mode, most people are familiar with the ability to move an app to another page. This is basic iOS functionality. However, you can actually take this one step further and move multiple applications at once. To do this, pick up one app with one finger, and while you keep holding the app, tap on other apps and add them to the stack. You can then swipe to a different page and drop all the apps at once. Whenever I rearrange my home screens, this comes in very handy. Number three is another hidden gesture that allows you to zoom into anything with just one hand. Everybody knows about pinch to zoom on the iPhone. However, you can actually get the same functionality with just one hand. To do this, you want to double tap on the screen, but on the second tap, keep your finger on the display and then drag your finger up or down to zoom. I use this a lot inside of maps when I'm trying to navigate and I only have one hand available. And I think users of large iPhones will find this very handy. Next up is for screenshots. When you take a screenshot, most of you are probably familiar with the small preview that goes down to the bottom left corner. And if you tap on it, you can mark up the screenshot. But if you wanna share the screenshot without making any edits, you can actually press and hold on the screenshot and instantly open the share sheet. Another useful feature for screenshots is called copy and delete. If you tap on the preview and then the trash icon, you can select copy and delete, which is going to copy the photo to your clipboard, but it won't be saved in your camera roll. This was just added in iOS 16, and it's going to make people's photos app a lot less cluttered with useless screenshots. Number five is a built-in intelligence feature that I really like in iMessage. iMessage allows you to send your location to anybody, but you have to navigate to a different page inside the application to do this. There's actually a shortcut that you can enable simply by typing a phrase on your iPhone. If you type the phrase I'm at, the keyboard will automatically suggest you send your current location. Before we jump to number six, a quick reminder to hit that like button if you're enjoying the video and also subscribe if you want more content from IDB. Next up at number six is for the typeface on your iPhone. While you can't choose custom fonts on your iPhone yet, you can choose between two different styles. Go to display settings and turn on bold text. This will make the typeface on your iPhone more legible and easier to read. Adding on top of this, you can add the text size widget to your control center and you can set a custom font size on a per app basis. For example, you may want to set your maps to have a larger text so it's easier to read when you're driving. Number seven is a quick tip that lets you jump back to the home page of settings way faster. It's kind of a small feature, but I think a lot of people are going to find it very useful. When you're multiple pages into settings, if you press and hold on the back button, you can choose to jump right back to the main page of settings instead of tapping on the back button repeatedly. The same concept works for lists as well. If you tap on the top of the screen, your iPhone will instantly scroll all the way back to the top of the list. Number eight is probably the coolest feature in this video. Inside accessibility settings, there's a feature called sound recognition. iOS has many sounds it can recognize using the microphones on your iPhone, and many people think that this is only for people with hearing problems. However, this can actually come in handy in many situations. One example I can give is whenever I'm expecting a delivery and I'm waiting for the doorbell, if I have headphones on, my iPhone can alert me if it hears a noise that resembles a doorbell. Next up, coming in at number nine, is another cool feature in iOS called Live Captions. This is also turned on in accessibility settings, and it can add captions to literally everything on your iPhone. This uses on-device intelligence, and it does it in real time, so it doesn't require the media to have captions built in. It also works for FaceTime calls as well. Individuals who have difficulties hearing are going to find this feature life-changing, and in my experience, the captions are very accurate as well. 
And finally, at number 10 is something called Guided Access. This feature lets you lock down your iPhone into just one application. If you're handing your iPhone to someone you don't fully trust, or maybe you're handing it to your kid, you'll want the iPhone to stay on one application that you choose in order to protect your privacy. Guided access can be turned on with a triple tap of the side button, and it's only disabled when authenticated with face ID or a passcode. When in guided access, everything is disabled, including notification center and control center. It'll also prevent the phone from being locked as well. I want to hear your thoughts, so comment and tell me what your favorite feature was I covered in this video. And after commenting, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.